Okay. Hey, uh, I'm uh, AJ Donatio. I'm going to be your professor this semester. I'm going to go through putting an IV in somebody, okay? I have a different technique than some other people, and I want you guys to learn it. You can, If you see something that you want to do differently, that's fine, as long as the IV is placed successfully. During checkoffs, you don't have to get the IV right. You just have to have proper technique, okay? So that's what I'm going to go through. The things you're going to need for this exercise is your uh, IV extension set. That's going to be attached to the person. Your IV kit. You should have three of these in your package. Leave one of them unopened that you're going to use for checkoff. Okay? So practice with two of them if you want to. And then leave a syringe. Okay? This is just going to be for the IV, then we'll do the primary and secondary after we get done with this. Okay. So the first thing you're going to do. Hey, good afternoon, Mr. Arm. Um, AJ Donatio. Uh, I've got orders to go ahead and put an IV in you because this person came as a direct admission to the floor. Okay, so they're not going to have an IV. They're not coming up from the ER. When they come up from the ER, they have stuff done. When they come to the direct admission from the doctor's office, they got nothing but paperwork. So um, we're going to get you set up. We're going to put an IV in. Now I'm looking at the arm. Now this individual happens to have great veins. Uh, three general rules that I think of when I think of putting an IV. Number one, get what you can get. If you don't get the IV, it doesn't help. Okay. Two, the proper size for the job that you're doing. If you're just given a, a one small bag of IV antibiotics, you maybe go with a 22 size, you know, or if the person, you know, kind of thing. Um, if you're doing IV hydration, you're going to want like 18 or 20, okay? In this case, we're going to be used a 24, which is a really small one, but it's easy for you guys to work with for, for practice, okay? So you have a 24 gauge. That's one of the things we need to have as a lancet. Okay, so I'm going to walk in, introduce myself. I've introduced myself. Um, I say, hey, sir, let me take a look at your armband and make sure that we do our two identifiers, make sure we're putting the IV in the right patient. All right, we've done that. I'm going to go ahead and wash my hands. Now, normally I would do this when I walk in the room. I let the person, I do the hand sanitizer, walk in like this so that they see me doing this as I walk in so that my hands are clean when I'm, when I'm touching them. Now, um, I'm not putting on gloves yet, but what I am going to do is I'm going to break open my IV start kit and I'm going to get out the tourniquet. Now you'll notice I don't have gloves on for this and there's a reason for that because I don't yet need them. What I'm doing is I'm looking for my site where I'm going to go. And this individual I'm probably going to go right here just for ease of you guys, but let's assume the veins aren't quite this good. All right, turn it on. Did you guys practice putting turn it on in class? Okay, you guys know how to do that? Great. So I just did that. Um, now, if the veins aren't clumping up, because what you're doing when you're putting on a tourniquet is you're blocking venous return. You're not blocking, blocking arterial flow. So you still have blood going to the extremity and slowing the return. So if you increase volume and decrease the ability for it to come back, the veins are going to go That's what it's called, the venous dilation. Okay, that's what's going on. That's what we want to happen. Now, if it doesn't do that really well, you can take an alcohol pad and pocket or on them. All right. The nice thing about alcohol pads, and what I'm doing is I'm not cl actually cleaning the site. What I'm doing is I'm just going to kind of agitate the skin a little bit in the area where we're going to go. Now if you do this on a person, watch what happens. That vein starts to plump up really nice. Same thing happens on the patient. Okay, so you're not doing that for cleaning purposes, you're doing it just for vasodilation. Okay, so uh, we can do that, or we can hang the extra, hang the arm down below the level of the heart. If you take your arm and you put it down like this, you can feel the blood start to pull. Gravity doing its thing. That's all that is. Now, I've isolated where I want to go. Cool, excellent. Like, you know what? you got a great vein right there. That's where I'm going to go. Oh, and those three things. Number one, get what you can get. you got to get the IV. Number two, write IV for, for what you're going to do for the job you're getting ready to do. Three, if you can get both those things easily, you don't go for patient comfort. Okay, go for the non-dominant arm if you can. If the only thing that you have that you can get is the right AC and the right-handed, and that's the only thing you can get, that's what you have to do. That's part of the job. Okay, but if you can do some patient comfort, let's go for patient comfort. In the med surge floors, I happen to like right in here because it's flat. When you put that IV in, no matter what they do on that left arm, they're not going to snag it, they're not going to catch it, they're not going to pull it, and it's a good spot for a couple days. All right, um, that's just me. All right, so now that I've got that done, I'm going to start getting my equipment together. But because I have 11 other patients, time management is what I'm thinking about. So before I start prepping my material, I'm going to bust open my chlorhexidine. Chlorhexidine is in this vial. Inside that vial, there's a glass vial. Break it. Scrub, 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 scrub,
so that if I miss my first shot distally, I have another shot proximally. Okay. Now chlorhexidine, you go back and forth. Uh, I die, do a circle, but I'm going back and forth because it's chlorhexidine. All right, and I'm going to toss that. Yeah, I'm garbage can over here. Um, so I did. Now, while that's drying, I'm going to prep my other equipment because that has to dry anyway. So I might as well use my time efficient, efficiently and effectively. When you guys open up your um, extension sets, I want you to just banana peel them a little bit so we can use them again. Don't don't rip it open. Just do that. Now, even in the real world, when I'm putting an IV, I just open it about that much, and I pull out the extension set. Now, this is sterile on the ends. I want to keep it that way. Now, what I should have done first was open this. So I'm going to pretend I didn't do that just yet because I'm in camera and I'm a little nervous, although you know you can't tell. All right. Syringe, 10 milliliters of pre-filled syringe are all over the place in the hospital. When you open one of these up, pull it back first. That breaks that little seal that's in there, then advance it. Because if you don't and you do that, it goes and you shoot the seal. That's not on camera, is it? Sorry. All right. So you just you pull it back to break the seal and then advance it ever so slightly and bada bing. Okay, that's how you do that. Now, open this up ever so slightly, pull that out. That is sterile. This is still sterile on the inside and I want to keep it that way and I'll show you why in a minute. I can connect this directly to here because I haven't touched that end with anything. And then I'm going to go ahead and flush it a little bit. I have now primed my extension tubing. I'm going to slide the blue clip all the way down. I'm going to take off this end because you're not going to want to do this one-handed later on and you'll understand what I'm saying in a few minutes. Open that up and put it back in there. Then I'm going to place that, since I'm right-handed, at 2 o'clock. All right. Now I've got my, I've got a set of gloves, which I'm not going to use those because I don't like them. I've got a 2 by 2 which I'm going to save over here. I've got a piece of tape, which I'm not going to pull off, but I am going to start it up a little bit for myself, make it easier later on. And I've got my tegaderm. I'm going to open my tegaderm. And put, see that little notch? That's going to go on the hilt of your catheter. We'll see, you'll see it in a minute. And I'm going to open it up, I'm going to set it like that, and I'm not going to touch that again. Not until I need it. Now, I'm getting ready to bust open a needle in my clinical. I'm going to open it up. What is the rule in my clinical before you bust open a needle? Before you open up a needle for any reason in the patient's room, what do you have to have? A pair of gloves, and I know where my sharps container is. So, I'm going to go ahead and put my gloves on because I'm getting ready to introduce a needle into the patient's skin, which is possibly going to expose me to blood-borne pathogens, and we don't want that. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and put this back on without touching the area that I cleaned. And it doesn't really be like that, but it's a mannequin, so. Turn it on nice and tight. All right, now I open up the catheter. And I'm going to twist this hub a little bit and move it ever so slightly. The reason I do that is because it's plastic. It's been the packaging for a while, even in the hospital. If you don't do that, sometimes they catch a little bit and you, do, you want that like that so you can just slide it off nice and easy. Now, whenever you're putting in an IV, bevel up, just like she showed you in class, which means it's going at an angle like this, okay? I use my thumb and my middle finger, that way I'm able to see into the barrel. And I have my index finger free for when I get when I get it in there to advance. So that's how I put it. Pinky out, SpongeBob. Anyway, that's on there, isn't it? Great. All right, so um, I know where I'm going to. I already set it up. It's already ready to go. So I'm going to use my left hand, my non-dominant hand, and I'm going to pull the skin, which is also going to anchor that vein. All right, I don't want any hands or any any digits north of, the, of where I'm going in. I want it to my side. All right. Do, 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 do. And I go in, and I feel that pop. And you're gonna actually feel it let go when you cross, think of the vein as a, as a hose. When you get in there and it goes into that center section, it's gonna move a little bit. It's gonna be free to move, all right? That's what I felt. At that point, I'll see blood start to go into the chamber, all right? When that happens, I'm gonna lower it a little bit. I'm gonna go from a 30 degree to about a five degree, advance it a little more. Then I'm gonna start advancing the catheter off 
or the, the, the plastic piece, but not advancing the needle. And I'm pulling, it's one movement. You're advancing while you're pulling back, okay? Because I'm not shoving, I'm not putting that needle all the way into the vein, I'll go through it. So the needle only went in the vein like that far, and I pull back. Now, once the needle's clear, normally there'd be a safety device on this. Once the needle is clear, you just set it down, don't get fancy. That is when you can use your non-dominant hand and press on that. I don't want that non-dominant hand anywhere near this thing while that needle is still in there because I don't want it coming through and poking you. Then this is just a clock face. 12 o'clock, release that. One o'clock, that's why I prepped this thing the way that I did. That goes on here. Once that's on here, I can let that go and then grab. You'll notice that non-dominant hand is not letting that thing go under any circumstance. If I let it go and that person moves, IV comes out, you start all over again, you have a really unhappy patient, okay? And then I'm going to pull, I get my flood, blood, blood flashback, and then flush a little bit. Not all of it, just a little bit, maybe one or two cc's, or milliliters, okay? I'm in, it's in, he's not complaining. Now, I take my open tegaderm. Open tegaderm goes over the incisions, over the insertion site like that. Not on the barrel, just on the catheter itself. Now I'm reasonably well secured, okay? Please, sir, do not move your arm for a moment. I need to secure this thing, okay? So then you do that. I'm going to pull a piece of tape, which is fun to do with gloves. Now, at this point, this gets into style, and this is just the way that I do it. I put a piece around the barrel, then I make my J-loop. And I always like to have my clip as far north as I can on that. And then I pull to make sure I'm, I make sure I'm good. Now if I'm done, if I'm not giving an IV, if I'm not giving a IV infusion, this is where that positive pressure thing she was talking about. As I'm flushing, I'm using my thumb and two fingers like that. Flush, 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 flush lock. Then I can take that off. And that's an IV. Okay. If I'm go if I'm getting ready to give an if I've got an IV that I'm gonna hang, I would just leave this on for a minute and that acts as a cap until I'm ready to connect it. But we're not. So flush, 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 lock, positive pressure, and unhit. And you can go and stop the video, please.